Uh, welcome to this lecture number 36. In this particular lecture, we will cover this modeling and management of groundwater and under this, so our main topic is modeling and management of groundwater and under this topics to be covered are groundwater management model uh, that is for confined and unconfined aquifer and this linked simulation optimization also will cover that meta model based approach. Uh, in the last lecture or lecture number 35, uh, we have talked about uh, groundwater management model for confined aquifers that is basically uh, confined aquifers uh, with uh, one dimensional flow situation under steady state condition. In that one, uh, we have one linear objective function uh, and uh, we have discretized our governing equation uh, using finite difference method and we have utilized those equations as constraints for our optimization model. And finally, the total model or total formulation uh, can be solved using linear programming because all the constraints and objectives are linear in uh, nature. So, today uh, we will start with the unconfined aquifer first and we will try to solve that unconfined uh, confined aquifer flow aquifer flow management model. This is also uh, applicable to one dimensional flow situation. So, steady state uh, groundwater equation for unconfined aquifer uh, can be written as so, this is for steady state flow situation where x is the flow direction, then T x and this is del h by del x equals to w. So, in this one uh, T x can be written as k h, k is the hydraulic conductivity and H is the hydraulic head. So, with this uh, expression, if we replace it in our original equation, then we can write the whole equation as K H del H by del X equals to W or we can write it as del h by del x half k and this is basically 
h square x square w. So, for homogeneous type of aquifer, we can take this k out of this derivative thing, homogeneous uniform condition, we can write it as k and we can transfer the 2 on the other side. So, del 2 h 2 divided by uh, this is del x 2 and we can write it as 2 w. So, from this one uh, final equation will be our del 2 h 2 del x 2 or 2 w k or simply mm, we can write this as uh, because h is only a function of x. So, we can write it as uh, our ordinary differential equation. Now, uh, we can apply our finite difference uh, discretization to this left hand portion, but the problem is that it has got this h square term. So, what we can do? We can uh, substitute uh, another secondary variable uh, with let us say this is small w, we can write it as h square. So, uh, with this replacement our equation will become a linear equation. So, with this substitution our final equation that will look like d 2 w this is d x 2 and 2 w by k and finally, if we apply uh, the finite difference method. So, we can write it as w i plus 1 minus 2 w i plus w i minus 1 divided by del x square and on the right hand side it will be w i divided by k. Uh, we are using a single k value for the whole domain because we have considered that uh, aquifer is homogeneous in nature. So, uh, now uh, this particular equation uh, can be uh, used as uh, constraint for our optimization problem. So, our optimization problem then uh, it will become maximize our z which is summation of all small w i's where i belongs to that set uh, capital I which is the set of all wells. Now, this is subject to our total pumping for all pumping wells that should be greater than equal to minimum pumping value and other constraints that we need are small w should be greater than equals to 0, head uh, cannot be negative and also our pumping cannot be negative. So, these are the constraints uh, which need to be satisfied for our uh, objective uh, or optimization problem and we have our 
this particular equation that will act as binding constraint for the optimization problem or equality constraint. This approach is basically our embedding technique approach where we directly uh, utilize the governing equation uh, within the optimization problem as uh, constraints. So, uh, uh, with this H i or head at a particular location that can be determined from our this uh, root over uh, w small w i thing. And we can also satisfy uh, additional constraints because for this particular location uh, we can have constraints like w 5 that should be less than equal to w 4 small w. Similarly, our uh, uh, w 4 should be less than w 3 and w 3 should be less than w 2. Similarly, we have w 2 less than equals to w 1 and w 1 is less than equals to our w naught. So, uh, like our previous uh, confined aquifer problem, we can set uh, another problem where this is your uh, impervious datum and we have four wells. So, this is the four well situation and uh, both the left hand and right hand boundaries are defined uh, in terms of hydraulic head that is basically H 5 and H naught. So, these are basically specified uh, boundary conditions or specified head boundary condition and we have Q 1, Q 2, Q 3 and q 4 for this situation. Then this uh, corresponding to this we have h 1, this is h 2, this is h 3, this is h 4. So, we can see that this particular equation, uh, this particular con set of constraints can be directly utilized within the optimization model to get the solution because uh, the head here uh, at this uh, downstream or down gradient point should be uh, should have a less uh, less value compared to one up gradient point. So, in this particular problem this is the aquifer portion. we have the problem as maximize the z where small w 1, w 2, w 3, w 4. This is our objective function subject to 
uh, finite difference equations that is 2 w 1 plus w 2 minus del x square by k w 1 minus uh, w naught and w 1 minus 2 w 2 plus w 3 minus 2 del x square by k w 2 this is 0 again we have w 2 minus 2 w 3 plus w 4 minus 2 del x square divided by k and w 3 this is 0 and the final equation uh, uh, we can write it as w 3 to w 4 minus 2 del x square by k w 4 equal to minus w 5 all uh, these are small w's these two are small w's in this side these are basically small w's and these are basically capital W values or pumping values. These corresponds to our, our hydraulic head. Now, uh, this is this set is the binding constraint, this set is the binding constraint and this particular set which we have already written that is valid for uh, the optimization problem that will uh, uh, that will give a proper result because any down gradient hydraulic head cannot be greater than the up gradient uh, or cannot be greater than uh, compared to a up gradient value. So, what are the other constraints that will be required for this one? Those are uh, related to production rate, production rate in case of production rate we have w 1, w 2, w 3, w 4 this should be greater than w minimum and small w i's should be greater than 0 for i equals to 1 to 4 capital w i greater than equals to 0 for i 1 to 4. Again uh, all the uh, objectives and constraints are linear in nature. So, we can directly solve it using linear programming algorithm. Now, uh, we have already covered this uh, confined and unconfined uh, one dimensional flow management problem uh, for ground waters. Now, we will try to see what is there in two dimensional thing. So, uh, for any steady state uh, homogeneous uh, confined aquifer system, the equation can be written as this is uh, this t is having single value because uh, we are considering a constant hydraulic conductivity over the two dimensional aquifer. So, if we discretize this, so discretization should be i j minus 2 i j plus h i minus 
j divided by del x square plus h i j plus 1 to h i j plus h i j minus 1 divided by del y square equals to w i j and divided by t. So, uh, if we consider that del x equal to our del y, then we can rewrite this equation as h i plus 1 j minus 4 h i j plus h i minus 1 j plus h i j plus 1 plus h i j minus 1 equal to del x square w i j divided by t. Again, uh, if we want to write uh, a two dimensional management problem 2D uh, management problem for uh, this kind of aquifers, we can write it as maximize z. In this case, we should have h i j where i comma j this belongs to the uh, set i uh, for wealth and subject to our binding constraints that we have already derived for 2D aquifer and i j all i w i j greater than w minimum and h i j greater than 0 w i j greater than equals to 0. So, this can be solved using again uh, by LP problem. Uh, LP method or linear programming method. So, if you have a transient problem, let us consider a transient problem with confined aquifer system. So, transient problem with confined aquifer so in this case uh, we can uh, have this del uh, this is for one dimensional case and this is transient 1D thing. So, the equation del 2 h by del x 2 that can be expressed as uh, crank Nicholson thing. In crank Nicholson, half of the derivatives are evaluated at the present time step and half of the derivatives are uh, evaluated at the future time step. Let us n denotes uh, the time level and i plus 1 denotes our space level. So, this is basically 2 h i n plus h i minus 1 n divided by del x square plus our h i plus 1, this is n plus 1 level to h i n plus 1 level plus h i minus 1 that is also at n plus 1 level. So, for at single the second order derivative we are 
using this crank Nicholson scheme. So, in this scheme, we can discretize the whole thing uh, like this. Otherwise, uh, we can also discretize this thing uh, using uh, our any particular time step. So, crank Nicholson scheme is basically bounded one. So, we have this is nth n plus 1 level, this is nth level and this is spatially ith derivative uh, or ith location. This is i minus 1, this is i plus 1, this is again i, i minus 1, i plus 1. So, it involves uh, all these points within our calculation and that way it is, uh, it will give uh, a advantage during the solution process. And uh, if you discretize our this time dependent or transient term like this, this is i n plus 1 minus h i nth level and del t. Also, we can discretize our w that is average between i nth level and i n plus 1 level. So, if we substitute uh, these terms in our original equation, we can get one uh, linear equation and again if we employ our transient problem uh, or transient values. Uh, within our uh, optimization framework, then it will be a time dependent optimization problem. So, uh, uh, we can write this thing as maximization of z and our i all i and this is i tau. Tau is basically our last, last time step. So, our subject to uh, we can use the constraints as i w i n or we can directly use it here uh, t level and this is greater than equal to w minimum and which is at t level and this t varies from 1 to that tau. So, at the last uh, time step our head values uh, sh should be maximum or we should maximize our head values at the last time step. And we have this constraint that for each uh, uh, time period or management period, uh, we can have the total pumping which will be greater than our minimum uh, value of pumping. Finally, uh, if we have any uh, 2D unconfined 
aquifer situation, then uh, we have the equation like this. And with our usual substitution for unconfined aquifers, we can rewrite the equations as del x square del 2 w y 2 2 w k and, and we can uh, discretize this particular equation with our uh, finite difference formulation. Now, uh, this is uh, time uh, independent or uh, steady state problem for unconfined aquifer situation. Now, let us talk about uh, the simulation optimization problem. In case of uh, simulation optimization problem, we directly use the simulation model as binding constraint within our uh, optimization model, but we link it externally using any ready made uh, simulation model or we can write our code, but we link it externally with the optimization model. For any uh, flow and transport related problem, we can have one extra constraint that is uh, your concentration value should be below the specified concentration limit. So, in this case, uh, uh, this has been taken from our salt water intrusion management problem. So, we have, uh, we have this maximization of pumping from production wells, then minimization of pumping from extraction or barrier wells, because these uh, pumped waters uh, cannot be directly used for uh, our uh, water supply systems. We need to have some kind of reverse osmosis or any other kind of plant to treat these water. So, this capital Q is uh, for any x i location and t k is the time level. So, uh, time period. So, at any specific spatial location at any particular time period. So, summation over all spatial locations and all spatial all time periods, we can maximize this production function or production uh, well uh, pumping and minimize the pumping from extraction barrier well. So, that is for location j and for time period k and this is subject to this uh, externally linked uh, simulation model c, we can directly get from this external g function, which is not exactly one uh, proper uh, expression, but it is some kind of linked uh, link thing and this is concentration related constraint that uh, it should not be greater than any uh, specified concentration limit. These are the uh, limit for our uh, production well and barrier well. So, we can have this kind of situation where this is our optimization model. So, during evaluation of objective and constraints, we can go to FEM water, FEM water is density dependent flow and transport 
simulation model. So, during uh, this objective function and constraint calculation, we need the information about concentration. So, what we are passing through this? So, we are passing the information related to q and small q that is pumping values for production well, pumping values for barrier wells. And what we are getting out of this FEM water model? We are getting the concentration values. That way it is externally linked. Now, with this algorithm we can have this final solution. That is, this is uh, uh, one uh, solution set that is for a number of objective function values. So, one objective is maximization of F1, F1 is the production, one is minimize the uh, F2. So, that way there is conflict. So, if we maximize one thing, there will be increase in other value. So, there is trade off between first objective and second objective. So, let us consider one hypothetical example. This particular phase, let us say this is our ocean phase or sea phase. These three wells are extraction or barrier wells and these wells are our production wells and these two boundaries are no flow boundaries and this is our inland phase. So, uh, this is the size 1800 meters, 100 meter thickness of the aquifer and 1400 meters and this has been modeled using FM water. So, these are the well screen levels. So, uh, these are the values for the hydraulic conductivity 25 meters per day for x and y direction and 0.25 meters per day in z direction. Longitudinal dispersivity alpha L is 50 meters, alpha T that is 20 meters, molecular diffusion coefficient that is 0.69 meter square per day, soil porosity that is 0.2 and density reference ratio interestingly uh, previously we have used this alpha C divided by C s. Now, this alpha by C s is basically this particular epsilon. So, this is density reference ratio, this is our vertical recharge. Uh, Although it is having that small q uh, notation, but it is different from or pumping from extraction barrier thing. So, different parameters, uh, let us say we have that C max value is 500 mg per liter. So, this is standard for secondary maximum contaminant level. So, this is 500 mg. For any uh, multiple objective optimization, because we have two objectives, so we can designate it as uh, uh, multi objective optimization. So, this is called as Pareto front. So, one objective is spreading in these two directions, spreading of final solutions, and second. And uh, this is the second goal and the first goal is movement of solutions and the final uh, front should be uh, almost coinciding with our Pareto front or it is nearing to our Pareto front. So, with different number of iterations or generations, let us say this is generation number 1, there is a uh, first objective is uh, can be realized because this is 100 generation, 200, 300. So, it is moving towards 300 number uh, in 300 number generation, uh, it is moving towards parator front. 
and uh, with the increase in generation number, it is also spreading in both the directions. So, let us say this is our final front. So, uh, in this particular front, 11 and 14 are uh, two points and these two points are uh, showing two different results, two different means uh, 11 and 14 will give you two sets of capital Q and small q values and with that you can explain uh, the process. One thing is that for point number 11, we have uh, F 1 value which is less than uh, our uh, F 1 value compared to 14, but it is having a better value for F 2 compared to uh, solution number 14. So, we can see that there is some kind of trade off between the solutions. So, it took around 24 uh, into 800 simulations, it took 30 days of running time. So, the problem is that running time is a problem for linked simulation optimization. So, what we can do? We can use our meta model based approach for uh, management purpose. First uh, thing is that response matrix approach, other thing response surface methodology or meta uh, or other meta model based approaches artificial neural network, radial basis function, support vector machine, rele relevance vector machine and Kriging model and GP. So, uh, what is the difference between our original simulation model and meta model? So, original simulation model will give you the exact value of H or C, but in case of meta model, there will be some amount of error involved with it. Although we can gain in terms of uh, solution time or uh, gain in terms of uh, solving a particular problem in management related issues. So, first thing is this response matrix thing, response matrix approach and this response matrix approach, let us say uh, drawdown for any location S, uh, the drawdown S for any location K n, K is the special location or cell and n at the end of nth time period can be written in terms of this expression so in this case this unit response function unit response function uh, it tells something that is in the kth cell kth cell at the end of nth time period due to unit. So, it is basically denoting 
the change uh, in drawdown for nth cell, uh, the kth cell at any time period due to due to unit pumpage from jth cell and pth time period. So, this is some kind of unique response for kth cell at the end of nth time period due to the unit pumpage or injection in the jth cell uh, during pth time period. So, for uh, kth cell at, at the end of nth time period, we need to consider all uh, time periods which are less than nth time period. So, starting from 1 to n and j, we need to consider all possible uh, cell locations. So, this is all possible cell locations. So, we can replace our binding constraints with this particular expression. These, uh, ex these uh, unit response functions can be obtained by simulation of the original simulation model. Now, we can use ANN, ANN has got architecture uh, of something. So, we have some input and we can get some output and we can evaluate the performance using total error. Total error is desired and actual one and again desired and actual one average absolute relative error can be computed using this. So, uh, this is basically number of uh, layers and uh, we can also find out this correlation coefficient for this one to check uh, the accuracy of the ANN models. So, what is there in the link simulation uh, optimization with meta model? We have physical simulation model here and we have meta model here and we have optimization model here. So, from simulation model we can it, we generate input patterns using that this is Latin hypercube sampling. This is one sampling strategy with which we can generate uh, our input pumping values and we can input that in FEM water model and uh, we can generate training and testing data set. We can train that ANN model or any SBM or GP model. Uh, then we have that train model and train model uh, will pass that capital Q and small q again we will get c value out of this and we can use this c value for optimization and again we can get this multi objective solutions. So, so these many iterations are required for uh, the, the testing part and the 3000 training data set was used and 600 testing data set and this was the architecture 33 inputs. These are two hidden layers and this is the output thing. So, we can see that meta model based approach is giving almost uh, 
equal or better result compared to our uh, direct linked simulation optimization model. There can be another approach where we can use this uh, screening model thing. So, we have this physical simulation model. From physical simulation model, we can have our meta model. From meta model, uh, we can run our optimization model and we can get some intermediate Pareto front or intermediate solutions and we can pass that particular solution to the final objective uh, or final optimization model where we have uh, original optimization or uh, original simulation model is linked with the optimization model. So, that way we can uh, get uh, a good accuracy in terms of uh, results and also we can reduce the number of iterations that will be required for uh, simulation of uh, original FEM water model during management uh, optimization simulation process. So, partially trained uh, meta model linked uh, simulation optimization and with 100 generation uh, with 1000 generation these are giving this is giving screening model based approach this is with linked simulation uh, based approach direct linked simulation based approach it is giving always the better result because these are the correct values and it is more near to our Pareto front because as moves in the right hand direction, it is more near to our Pareto front. There can be a link simulation optimization with operation uncertainty, we can run this simulation model for multiple realizations. We can give q and small q values and we can generate q plus uh, del q combinations, del q is small variation because in reality there will be variation of these values in fill situations. So, with this combinations we can run the model and we can get the average objective function value and standard deviation that we can uh, utilize here and we can get some kind of C bar with some C standard deviation, C bar means some mean value for the uh, concentration, we can pass it and we can get a robust optimal solution for the management problem. So, integrated planning mechanism, so we have robust optimal solution uh, from this uh, multiple realization approach, we can get final front or final Pareto front. Out of that, we will select one strategy and we will implement that single strategy in the field. There will be monitoring and we will collect some information. Again, we will with those information, we can update the simulation model. That is the actual process for any uh, integrated planning approach. Thank you.